The electrification of transportation has taken years to catch on, with many sticking to the well-known and well-respected combustion engine. Electric transportation is both a novelty but a necessity for the future, or that's the way the world is going at least. Large auto manufacturers like VW, Ford, General Motors and of course Tesla are powering ahead with EV design, manufacturing and dominance. Tesla, for example, have increased their manufacturing tenfold over the last five years and continue their research into efficient battery technology. Worldwide, 98 million EVs are expected to be sold annually by 2025, rising to 253 million by 2030. But whilst Tesla has stolen the EV limelight for the last 10 years, another business has been operating in the shadows and is finally becoming known amongst the public. Rivian Automotive, founded in 2009 by RJ Scaringe, is a privately held EV SUV manufacturer that specializes in a handful of large vehicles and aspires to both compete and complement Tesla in the EV world. But what is the story of Rivian and how have they risen to a rumored $90 billion valuation? Here's how it happened. To understand the Rivian business, we first must understand who is RJ Scaringe. Scaringe first dreamed of launching his own automotive business in high school, often rebuilding vintage Porsches in his spare time, and he went on to study engineering to try and achieve this feat. Earning his doctorate in mechanical engineering from MIT's Sloan Automotive Lab in 2009. During his studies, he became aware of the problems of the combustion engine, particularly from the climate angle, and even spent his days cycling and walking around campus, as well as taking cold showers and washing laundry by hand to reduce his carbon footprint. After graduating, Scaringe founded the business which he initially called Mainstream Motors, then Avira Automotive, before Scaringe finally dropped the alliteration efforts, settling on Rivian, which comes from the Indian River, where he often rode his boat in Florida. Based in Southern California, Scaringe first wanted to compete with the Tesla Roadster, the only cool EV around at the time to build a sporty coupe of his own. Two years later, after researching and building prototypes, Rivian unveiled a sports coupe before scrapping the project. The firm was struggling to raise money, and Scaringe began asking himself why the firm existed. He said, With a 2x2 coupe, we raised a small amount of capital. But after about two and a half years, we got to a fork in the road. We could continue down that path, hoping something changes, unlock the capital, and then scale up, or shelve it all and use those lessons to rethink the business. I shelved it. Then began the process of thinking hard about why we exist. Nothing else matters if you can't answer that. So they pivoted to focus on electric luxury SUVs and pickup trucks. But the firm stayed quiet for years, receiving enough funding by 2015 to open research facilities in California's Bay Area, as well as in Michigan which became their HQ. In 2017, they purchased a former Mitsubishi facility in Illinois to fully open their US manufacturing hub, for which they received state grants and tax abatements. During this time, Rivian also hired Jeff Hammond, a former Jeep designer, in order to finalize the design stage, Rivian first launched their SUVs to the public in 2018 at the LA Auto Show, some nine years after the business was founded. The R1T pickup and the R1S seven-seater SUV were launched with production due to start in 2020. Scaringe's goals have always been to shatter convention, especially when it comes to electric vehicles, to try to dispel some of the untruths in the industry. Rivian's EV EVs can get dirty, they can go off-road, they can push through three feet of water, and the battery is protected from damage. The Rivian trucks are described as being incredibly capable and fun to drive. They fit nicely between consumer luxury and a workplace workhorse. The innovative skateboard platform sets it apart from its competitors with a chassis that houses the battery, suspension, 
electric motors, and computers. We touched on it earlier, but let's dive deeper into the two SUVs and how they stack up with the competition. Both the R1S and the R1T have all-wheel drive, with the T starting from $67,500 with a range of 400 miles. The S starts at $70,000 with a range of 300 miles, and both can be equipped with extras like a camping kitchen that slides out of the rear seats. Similar to Tesla's novelties, the Rivians have a tank turn mode, able to turn on the spot in an instant. Both are expected to hit the road by October or November of this year, especially after tens of thousands of pre-orders have already been made. Rivian is taking the game to Tesla, who up until recently have focused on sporty saloons. Rivian believe that their focus is adventure, with Scaringe suggesting that there's a perception that this is winner takes all, and that's just wrong. Consumers need to have different brands and different flavours. Our success is not at all mutually exclusive to others' success. Maybe there is a world then, where Rivian and Tesla both thrive together. Their differences don't stop there though, as Scaringe plans to grow much more conservatively than Musk's Tesla. Targeting 2021 as the first full year of production, manufacturing 20,000 SUVs and 40,000 in 2022, Scaringe is also less eager to IPO, preferring to demonstrate their capabilities and let performance speak for itself before going public. That hasn't stopped the rumours though with estimates ranging from a $50 to $90 billion valuation for an IPO that could happen as early as this year. Part of the reason as to why those numbers are so high is due to the strong backing that Rivian has already attracted over the years, which have included BlackRock, T. Rowe Price, Fidelity, Cox Automotive and Ford, to name a few that have invested a total of $10.5 billion. A key motivation for Ford to invest was the skateboard platform, but perhaps the most key investment came from Amazon, the internet giants. Rivian have an agreement in place to build an all-electric delivery fleet for Amazon, who were looking to reduce their carbon emissions, who made an order for 100,000 units to be manufactured by 2030, with some already being seen in LA and San Francisco, in what is Rivian's first step into commercial vehicles. As far as the future is concerned, Rivian still has a long way to go because you can't just make vehicles. They're planning to build a network of fast charging stations, not just on highways and motorways, but also near off-road spots, trails and parks, given they are 4x4s after all. Colorado will see the first instalments of their adventure network to be seen at all state parks. Rivian are also seeking a European facility to pursue international expansion and they've recently filed for two additional trademarks, likely to be used for future vehicles. Unlike Tesla, Rivian is taking a more measured approach to growth and hopes to be able to manufacture 250,000 vehicles a year from their Illinois factory by 2025. Scaringe believes that Rivian is sat nicely within an EV niche looking like a cross between a Tesla and a Land Rover, and has already suggested that if you want to go skiing in 2035 or 2040, you take a Rivian. And that's how it happened. Thanks for watching.